in my professional career, 20 years, and I've grown up in the sport, you know, a lot of things have happened that you, you really just wonder at in hindsight. You just can't believe have, have been allowed to go on. And, and Lasix is really one of those. When, when I grew up, um, you know, the first trainer I worked for on the backstretch was Scotty Schulhofer. And Scotty was a Hall of Fame trainer and a great trainer. And in those days, you know, initially for Scotty, there was no Lasix in New York. And, and then eventually there was Lasix, but you had to be scoped and you had to be a bleeder to get Lasix. Well, everybody figured out that horses ran better on Lasix and not just bleeders, all horses. And so the next thing you know, everybody was cheating to pass the scope exam and get a Lasix card. Well, today at, on the Saratoga card, there are four horses who are not running on Lasix. And as a breeder and an owner of horses, I can tell you that the majority of those horses don't need Lasix, but they're gonna get it because they've got a Lasix card. So I, you know, I'm, I'm in favor of a, going back to the old way with a video scope where you're actually proving that a horse is a bleeder in the state, bar, in the state test barn with a state veterinarian, a repository of those scopes and, a, and Lasix for the horses that need it and possibly a weight handicap so that it's a fair uh, competitive playing field for all horses and all trainers and owners. And I was very glad that the, the Racing Commission in Kentucky um, took the position it did and I, and I looked at it a little bit differently from some of my friends in the business um, who were very well met in their opposition and their fear of being an island. Um, but I sort of viewed it like this with, with my two-year-olds. I want to race them Lasix free so that I can run them in the Breeders' Cup Lasix free and not have it be a big change. I think what Kentucky could end up being is the place to go prep your horse for the Breeders' Cup. Um, because you don't want to, if, if you're worried about running Lasix free in New York, and New York is allowing Lasix, uh, then maybe you would choose Kentucky where it's a level playing field again. Um, so so those, those ideas that the, the, I mean the Breeders' Cup raised the bar for everyone by saying we're going to be Lasix free for two-year-olds this year, and now horsemen have to figure out how they're going to get their horses there to perform at an optimal level and, and, and win the big race. Um, and I think that it's a really great idea that they're moving into the, you know, next year three-year-olds, next year four-year-olds. Um, you know, people that race in the Breeders' Cup are going to have to figure this out. It's one of my biggest concerns that, you know, we tend to think we operate in a bubble here in North America where um, a lot of our actions we, we feel like don't really matter. Uh, the thoroughbred industry is a global marketplace. I mean, you can't, you can't help but go to a sale and, and see people from all over the world coming to buy our horses. Um, but our global competitors are more than happy to point out that our horses race on Lasix on the day they race. Uh, to wit, the Chinese government has just done a deal with the French sales agency Arcana to import hundreds of hundreds and hundreds of horses to China from France. Um, don't think that that Lasix wasn't an issue.